सो हे गाइज वेलकम बैक टू माई YouTube चैनल इफ़ यू आर न्यू टू माई YouTube चैनल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वेलकम सो दिस YouTube चैनल इज ऑल अबाउट मेकिंग एक्सपेरिमेंट्स एंड सम फन प्रोजेक्ट्स रिगार्डिंग विद इलेक्ट्रिसिटी सो इफ यू हैव एवर वंडर्ड हाउ आर डेली लाइफ असेंशियल इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स वर्क एंड हाउ डू यू एक्चुअली मेक दैम सो दिस इज द राइट प्लेस सो मेक श्योर टू हिट द सब्सक्राइब बटन Uh, so you can get notified when I ever post a new video. So for today's experiment, we are going to be learning how to make an electromagnet and what electromagnet is. So electromagnet is actually basically works like a magnet. The only difference between the a simple magnet and electromagnet is that you can turn electromagnet on and off. whenever you want and however you want you can increase and also decrease its strength but unlike a magnet if you just go out there and buy a magnet uh, for suppose we say i went to the store i bought a new aluminum magnet so once i have bought it i can't make any changes to it it will remain uh, magnetic properties forever and i can't even increase or decrease the strength of the electromagnet uh, of the simple magnet but in case of electromagnet we can increase and also decrease the strength of the electromagnet and we can also turn it off and on so in in the last uh, few minutes of this video i'll be showing you uh, and connecting the electromagnet which we make in our today's video with a really high voltage power supply so you'll be seeing first of all we'll be using a 500 milliampere adapter and then i'll be switching up uh, towards a 5 ampere transformer uh, adapter which i kind of made myself so you can see it at the end of the video and you can see such big of a difference it just makes by increasing the uh, power supply or the current but if i just had a normal magnet i wouldn't have been able to do that and we can also actually turn it off and on uh, as you can uh, as you will see in the new video so if you have any queries or any questions about today's video you can link it down in the comments uh, just say maybe positive or negative anything any comment which you have you can list it down in the comment uh, section below and if you are actually uh, interested in making any uh, electric circuits or if you are just uh, kind of familiar with circuits or maybe not uh, even not very familiar with circuits and you have like school projects coming up or some like college projects or any project if you're just curious about anything and want to make something i actually have a fiverr account also it's basically a freelancing app uh on which uh you can actually contact me over there uh i'll link it down below and i have very low prices on there so my uh i'll be actually uh contacting you within a day whenever you reach out to me on fiverr and i'll also try to keep up my best i'll try my level best to read all the comments and answering each and every one so let's get started with the today's video then So for today's project we are going to be using a uh, iron nail this is a thick iron nail you can even use a thinner one a wire cutter a copper wire this is a enamel coated copper wire this is a 25 gauge wire you don't need actually that much of copper wire even if you buy a smaller bundle of it that would also work but that's just what i have right now with me uh and a knife uh, to scrape off the enamel coating of the wire okay so let's get started then so first you are going to be uh needing the iron nail so you are just going to wind out some of the wire so it's easier to work around with so we are going to be starting from the top and slowly working our way downwards so leave around 5 6 cm of extra wire hanging outside over here so we can make our connections so, and then firmly hold uh, the wire over here with your thumb 
uh, and try not to move it and start slowly winding the wire. So once you reach at that point, you just tightly hold it in and then you push the wire in. So it becomes nice and compact. So we are going to be repeating this process over and over again until our whole iron needle over here is fully covered with copper wire. So we are just going to be unwinding the wire again, winding it back on, pushing it in. And uh, I've also actually sanded this nail down with a sandpaper so to remove any rust or any debris which is formed on the nail. So make sure you also actually uh, sand the nail down before doing this whole procedure so we are just about to finish now just a few more turns and we will be finished so i'll be using my wire cutters over here to cut it uh, around uh, generally so now as you can see we are done with uh, coating our whole uh, nail down with the wire we are going to be using some super glue at the end to secure it down so it doesn't uh, comes apart while trying to use it so I'll be just applying a genuinely amount of super glue over here and I'll just be uh, also putting some super glue down on the other side too. So this is actually totally optional. You can even use cello tape if you don't have super glue or any like heavy quake or any glue like that laying around. You can even use basically just a cello tape and wrap it around the edges. So after you reach at this stage, uh, the only thing left to do is to actually scrape off these edges edges with the, using a knife so I'll be holding it down uh, onto the table over here and then slowly start scraping it down with a uh, the knife And make sure to keep the wire keep turning the wire around so you can scrape off from all the sides so you can uh, get the copper underneath the enamel coating so we can make some uh, wire connections and we can actually solder this wire to a normal uh, wire and like a normal aluminium wire insulated aluminium wire and then connect it to a battery so as you can see now over here we have actually scraped off all that enamel coating as you can see even the color of the copper is different from that enamel coating so over here I have a 12 volt DC adapter. This is a 12 volt 500 milliampere power adapter. So this basically converts the AC voltage into DC and I'll be plugging that into a wall. We are going to be using this, this as a power source. So I'll be connecting the terminals over here. This actually doesn't matter. You can uh, even switch them uh, alternate them like connect the positive over here and negative uh, connect the negative over here and positive over there and vice versa you can do anything because this is not actually defined that you have to 
this is a this is the positive side and this is the negative side uh, like in case of an led so now we are actually running current through our electromagnet over here so now it actually is turned on and it uh, does show some electromagnetic properties so if we try to lift off uh, this stapler pin over here it can actually lift it off but it can almost barely just lift off this small pin just like barely hold it up just barely so i am also uh, sure that it won't be able to lift this up yeah it can't so now actually uh, in order to make it stronger we are going to be applying it with even more higher voltage and more higher current so in order to do that what we are going to be doing is using another power supply which i actually made over here so the reason why i made this uh, power supply by myself and not just buy another one from the market uh, is the reason why uh, that usually in these high voltage and high ampere power supplies they have actually something called that as short uh, circuit protection so that basically means when two wires positive and negative are touched together uh, it actually just breaks the circuit it just completely shuts off the current in order to save uh, save all the electronics components connected to it but in our case we don't actually want that so i had to uh, make it myself this is a 12012 5 ampere transformer and i have made myself a little uh, ac to dc transformer over here this is a rectifier bridge and this uh, over here is a capacitor so this is uh, actually i'm connecting this uh, to the both uh, positive terminals over here uh, this is also 12 volt this is also 12 volt the mi middle one is of zero so i'm connecting uh, these two outer uh, side one uh, so we'll be getting around 30 ish 37 ish voltage out of this i can even show you when we turn it on through a uh, multimeter so i actually highly highly recommend you guys not actually trying this part at your home you what you can do is uh, just buy another one of those adapters maybe buy a one amp one like the one which we used was half amp 0.5 amperes so try not doing this uh, at home because this could be dangerous because we are handling with high voltage current over here although the voltage coming out of here is dc but there is a chance of some voltage leak over here and there and this is also not that uh, small dc currents which uh, which we are usually working around with this is 5 ampere current and let me tell you guys that's no joke if you even touch the wire it can give you even a mild shock and it will actually shock you and it will hurt really well so now I'm, i have it turned on so now what i'm going to be doing this uh, doing is uh, i have my multimeter over here we'll be turning this on and we'll be connecting it over to the ac side first so i can show you guys what is the voltage reading at the ac side so i've connected the terminals over here yeah so we are getting 27 volts average yeah so i'll be connecting this to the dc side also just to confirm you guys that we are just getting around the same volts yeah no 36 ish volts uh, so let's uh, actually connect uh, electromagnet with it and before i connect the electromagnet i'm going to be turning off the power so i can safely connect it in because it will actually spark uh, give some sparks while connecting it while it has current going through it so i'll be just loosening this terminal up pouring the wire in and then tightening it back down have this terminal nice and secure over here i'll connect 
oh shit i almost actually forgot try not to actually make this mistake i forgot to discharge the capacitors capacitors actually charge up and you have to discharge them before using so that right there <laughs> was a great example why you should actually discharge them first so i'll just do that right now i think it should be fully discharged now but just to be sure you have to just connect the two terminals in just to be sure that it doesn't spark like that and the reason why it wasn't a big spark uh, because this is a, actually a really big capacitor so it can spark you quite a lot so actually we actually connected the whole setup and it was like a few seconds went by while i connected it so it discharged a bit so that was why it wasn't that big of a shock so okay now before i plug it in i won't be able to actually turn our whole power supply on for a lot of time so i'll try to actually hold it with this plier so i can show you and uh, I'll be just connecting it for like 10-15 seconds because this whole setup because we are shorting the wires basically over here uh, it gets really warm it gets around more than 50 degrees celsius uh, on this whole iron nail so touching it is also really hot uh, to the touch so I'll be just holding it like that so I'll be connecting the power in 3, 2, 1 so now I have current growing uh, through this now I'll be picking this up just see how how actually the strong this magnet is like nothing even happened it just picked it all up like nothing even happened just like this these stepler pins are like a joke to in front of it so i'll now be disconnecting the power and as you saw over there as soon i disconnected the power all the stepler pins actually dis, uh, detached so that was a great example showing that you can turn electromagnet on and off wherever you want and however you like. So if you like the video, make sure to hit the subscribe button and make sure to hit the like button too and share this video so it, we can help share this content and knowledge to the world. So thank you for watching my video guys. Bye.